Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're finally going to do it. Uh, I pulled someone that I've been looking to get for a long time, uh, a couple of weekends ago. We're building out Hedgy for the arena. Um, I'm going to try a comeback in the arena this coming Monday. So this week I'm going to be spending some time uh, tweaking a lot of my builds and trying to get myself back into the arena scene. I've not done it for, for probably a good couple of months. So my um, my knowledge of where the kind of current plat arena setup is a bit hazy uh, so it could be an interesting one but i still know that hedgy is well in the meta is someone that i've been looking for for a long time uh, so this video we're going to go through hedgy's kits i'm going to build him the old school way first and then we're going to build him for the current meta and they are really really different builds so um i kind of show you two different ways you could build a hedgy but certainly the second way is where the meta has gone with him right now so hedgy why is he a void legendary why did i want him so much honestly he's just so unique in the game and anyone who's totally unique um like a hedgy like a warlord um like a brogny and always got those kind of skills which have, have got a purpose in the game that nobody else can do makes them really valuable um and hedgy specifically is valuable because of his passive yeah so hedgy will always go first and it's not about speed unless he's fighting another hedgy so his his kind of passive just means he'll always go first if he's got no speed gear on at all doesn't matter he will nuke before anyone else gets a go which definitely means he lives up to void legendary status okay if you were to then just kind of go on to hellhades.com um, and check out damage against his skills so his a2 has got a grading of godlike for an aoe hit godlike on the website means it's top 15 percent of all aoe skills in the game okay so it doesn't mean he's going to be up there with a, a trunder, but he's in the top 15% of all hits. It means it's going to hit hard. Yeah, it's the top hit. It's the highest kind of um, grading we give. His A1 does not hit so hard. So the old school build is to make people blow up with the A2. Yeah, and it's the fun build. It's all of the damage goes into his A2. Um, if people are alive, there's also this chance, depending on your accuracy, for him to put decrease attack on people and to put block active skills on people. Now, block active skills is one of the most annoying abilities to have on you in the game. And Hedgy straight out the bat will come out with his A2 uh, with this 50% chance to put block active skills on. So the old school way to build him was full nuke, but with some accuracy so that if people did survive, at least there's a 50 50 chance that they're not going to be able to use any of their abilities um this for me is like the fun way to build a hedgy but the meta has changed and the meta has swung towards just making him a1 <laughs> which is his weak hitter but his a1's got this two hits at random and the two hits at random actually the first hit is not random it will hit the lowest hp enemy you've got on your enemy team so um you know, if you've got him as your arena defense champion, you've got these kind of two pew pews that go out and they will have the option to put decreased speed on the enemy. But also, if you've got the mastery, which drops turn meter, evil eye, it's going to throw their turn meter back by 20%. So with the RNG of an arena defense, if you can land your A1 against uh, an enemy speed lead uh, who's doing the speed boost or um, someone who's, who's kind of doing the control, then you throw your enemy's turn meters out of sync and therefore you try and take the initiative off of the enemy team. So I'll show you that build after we do the nuke build. But first off, we're going to build him out. Going to use the optimizer uh, to do it as always. Uh, I'm actually, a new version just gone out today. There is actually, I'll share this with this video. We've added this share button for premium users. So I can now share all of my builds with you guys. So I can create a share. Um, so let's say HH um, champs, I can make it expire. So I can say it's going out today. Let's make it expire on the 10th of the 10th because by then I probably would have ruined a load more of my builds. Uh, do appreciate if you look at this link, I probably will ruin my builds or my builds sometimes are just completely weird because I do weird content or I'd still gear off of people to do content and I forget to kind of fix them. So some of the builds will be fine. The stuff I use day in, day out. Some of the builds will just be weird. But I can share it here. I get a link. 
I can copy the link and I'll, I'll put this link down in the description. Anybody, whether you're a premium user or not, can kind of look at my builds. And if you are a premium user, you can share your builds with anyone else that wants to use it and, and take a look. Um, so it's quite, it's not a nice quick way to just be able to share how you built your champions, say with your clan or what have you. Um, anyway, let's come back to that. So champions there, let's get into Hedgy. We're going to build in full nuke first. So we're going to use the GPU accelerated, which is the best one for damage. I need no speed on him at all. I'm going to build for damage uh, and I'm going to optimize based on his A2. Uh, I'm also going to assume because the enemy cannot put an increased defense buff up before we fight them, I'm going to assume the average enemy defense is 2,500. Um, what do I want? 100% crit rate. I want um, maximum damage. So I don't need to do anything with crit damage or attack. But I just want a minimum 150 accuracy to go alongside it. And let's throw that build in. And what it should do once it starts optimizing is pile my attack up, pile my crit damage up. Interested to see what type of gear it's going to put me in. Um, oh, it has gone Savage and Cruel. I wasn't sure if it's going to go Savage and Cruel or not. Basically, uh, depending on the amount of defense you're trying to fight through, is it will kind of pick out different gear uh, depending on that. But you'll notice with the gear that we're pulling out here, there's no speed in it. We don't need speed. So it just makes the gearing way easier to do. Um, we've got 6,500 attack, 271 crit damage. This means he's going to absolutely blow stuff up. I can actually click the steals tab here, hover over it. So I'm going to be hitting for... Uh, damage around 50,000 on this top build. So let's get this built out. Let's put him in this gear and um, see what we can do. Okay, so we've got him built full nuke. Um, Savage and Cruel gear, 6.6k attack, 271 crit damage, 164 accuracy in case we do need to land anything. And obviously, if you've got any attack um, or accuracy, then you can just throw glyphs into that. So in terms of masteries then, I've ended with Helm Smasher just because... We know there won't be a decreased defense out there before I start hitting because he's going to go first. Yeah, so he just wants to nail people with that first hit. Um, I'm actually over on crit rate by 5%. So I could re-spec um, and take deadly precision out and put it into attack, which just gave me a slight benefit. Um, there's also a good argument to say Heart of Glory is really strong on him because he's going to get the 5% hit on his first hit every time. Um, the reason why I've done this route is because if there are shields out there, you want him to hit for the extra 25% damage to take the shield down. You definitely want Ruthless Ambush. Um, and then pretty much the other ones you kind of want increase damage when you're attacking people with higher HP. Chances are there's going to be at least a couple of people that uh, that procs for. Um, the rest of it is is kind of, you know, just the path to get to where you want to get to. Um, I've gone for the, the support tree as a secondary just because I kind of want Evil Eye in case the fight extends beyond the first hits. And um, and if we do start landing debuffs, you want it to go on for extra turns. So that's kind of where we're going for it. Um, so let me show you him in action. Let me show you him doing his kind of initial nukage. I am low down in the arena right now. So, you know, some of these teams may or may not be good. They may all be trash. I've got no idea. Um, in terms of setting him up, you could kind of push him into a number of different uh, routes. It's also worth saying that you could just run him as the lead for the extra crit rate if you're pretty confident that he's going to do the do, get the damage away um, with his first hits. And that way you can actually build with lower um, crit rate and therefore more crit damage. But I, th I still feel like it's worth throwing him into like a speed arena team just in case you can't get the job done. So you still go for your kind of normal speed into... Uh, either control or speed again and then into your other damage dealer so that's a, a decent option I'm just thinking i've just taken something off of trunda so she's going to be out of action so let's do this instead um but this build really is about the one shot and honestly if you've got multiple hedges which some people have just have a let's just see what he does here so what's that 30 to 60k across the board one person standing um, which is, is probably going to be the case a lot of the time with this type of build. One person standing, being the kind of, you know, the, the person who's actually got some sort of defensive stats about them. I'm surprised even she lived, honestly. Um, but yeah, if you've got multiple hedges, other than Swift Parry Deer, I can't really see how someone survives that. You know, you've got to have some insane um, defensive stats to survive 
multiple hedges hitting at the same time because as nuke hedges they can just do so much damage as we just saw you know considering there's no setup there's no increased attack nothing he just sits people down and as i say this is kind of like the fun build but when you come up against something like this a duchess you know people that are kind of built to be tanky built to revive this is why it doesn't really get through in the end game uh there's also you know both tanky type of um champs manage to stay alive and what they can do is totally turn the tide yeah it's also quite quite easy to get some anti-hedgy stuff going on providing you can withstand the first hit so i've got an anti-hedgy team built in where basically i just have uh i'll show you it quickly actually i just have in fact we go against a hedgy uh is there any hedges in here i thought i just saw one here we go um so my anti-hedgy team comes into play because i know what's going to happen yeah i know what's coming so basically i've got a full immunity team set up here apart from my morley who's in a shield set and providing i can withstand the first hits i actually get thrown into the lead so hedgy hits me my morley pushes my turn meter up and then i get the um i get the jump on them and then i just slam them with my foley so there are some good anti-hedgy teams which kind of deal with the nuke which is one of the reasons why hedges become this kind of different type of champ now and i'll show you that in a second another reason why hedges become a different champ is because as an arena defense all you want to do is get your warlord away you just want to get your warlord to have a turn to massively stall the game yeah this is this is your win condition you kind of got speed you want warlord to have a turn to lock out everything the enemy is doing which then makes him the most broken champion in the game and at that point it's like well who's going to come in and finish the job whether it's your um you know foley or kaimar or trunda whoever can kind of come in but hedgy kind of makes it possible because he will just potentially a1 interrupt everybody else or two two of the enemy opponents and it just gives your warlord that chance to get his block abilities away which is why these two paired together become pretty damn disgusting so um you can see hedgy is a threat in a nuke build but what we're going to do now is we're going to change him to a high accuracy control build and you've got a choice really you can either go straight up just high accuracy and make sure that he's going to land his stuff or you can go with an accuracy and um, control set of gear like taunt gear or stun gear or daze gear and the reason why you would do that with the a1s is because you, you want as high a chance for that to proc as possible you actually don't need accuracy at all for these gear sets to land so even if your accuracy is not high enough let's say you're using taunt um you'd have a 30 percent chance to land some sort of debuff be it a taunt in this set on the opponent to again stop them doing what they should normally do what it forces people to do if, if they're coming against a hedgy team it forces them to play in immunity gear yeah which basically stops those type of debuffs happening but the, the trouble with immunity gear and i can show you so i've got two arbiters here i've got an arbiter which is in speed gear 358 my arbiter in immunity gear 306 yeah hedgy forces the enemy to come with immunity gear which means that they're way slower which also means that as an arena defense you've got a much higher chance of keeping the initiative and still sitting people down so you know hedgy just opens up all sorts of options and that's why this build no longer becomes the build the build to go for is actually just to have him pew pew in with the a1 so let's change it up i'm going to put him into some probably some stun set gear because my taunt gear is pretty crap um and uh yeah let's see what the build becomes after that so when i'm building out this build let's just reset completely gpu accelerated um what i want to do is i want to go into sets i want to take stun set as a set i want to build with um and then in stats basically i want to keep it on balance this is the best uh, way to use the optimizer if you're trying to push a stat and i want to go for high accuracy now the other thing i would do is make sure that i've got a reasonable speed because there's a chance i'm going to be up against other hedges as well so i still want to rotate through his abilities pretty well so i'd say like a minimum speed of 170 
if I'm trying to build him to have some sort of effect in the arena. I'm also going to push for the 100% crit rate, am I? No, there's no point. His A1 doesn't really do any damage. So it's really just high accuracy, get the speed to an okay level, um, but in stun set, hit the start, get him going, and see what we get. So we ended up with 540 accuracy builds um, and you know, a couple of hundred speed. And there's not many people that are going to come offensively with resistance above six to seven hundred, which is what you would need to outdo that accuracy. So, you know, this build then becomes an absolute nightmare to deal with. And I'm in a stun set. So if I get my A1s off against two enemies, uh, I'm also going to likelihood is, you know, one in four chance they're going to be stunned as well. It becomes RNG based, but arena defense you want as many rng factors in the mix as you can you want to absolutely stall out their offense and make them have to rethink what what type of team they're going to attack you with so i'm going to put them into this gear now instead uh, and i'll show you what this one looks like so second hedgy then when we're going for full accuracy um again you can check this stuff if you want to see different build options for masteries this is like the best improvement we've done on the website i'd say in the last year uh, and it's only been out 10 months so <laughs> what do we do like every single champion we've kind of got these different options of builds that you can kind of throw out there for masteries so a crowd control build would be if you wanted to en enhance the chance of your stun on your hedgy uh, but this one for me i'm going to build the high accuracy build where basically i'm looking for the best chance of landing my a1 every single time so for this one we do uh let's move me back where i was so yeah i mean resistance here i, I don't know if it's particularly that valuable but the less than eight percent hit is quite nice and if you kill someone the ten percent is good um this is actually quite a an amazing um mastery if you're running something like a stun set so if we place a stun there's a chance of placing leech as well why that's so good is because resurgence is the most broken mastery in the game and there's a chance for someone to remove debuffs when they take a nuke so if you can place leech at the same time you've kind of put in the 50 50 up that they're not removing the debuff that you want to keep on um, we want the counter-attack stuff going on because uh, it's all about his a1s and then we're just going to pump his accuracy up higher over here. We're going to try and run more turn meter if we actually land stuff. Up in base stats here. This is the most important mastery of the build, Evil Eye. The 20%, all of his A1s count as a, a single target, so you get the 20% pushback. And then we're going to go into our Eagle Eye mastery. We need one more. Honestly, you could take a few. We've got another heal here if someone dies. So all in all... The build grows to a 628 accuracy build, 205 speed, which is still pretty fast, and it'll still do a little bit of damage anyway. You just need to make sure that when you set him up, that you set him up to only A1. So let's go against this team. Uh, we're going to need to set up in the team setup. And basically, you'd still go with you know, whatever team you're going to run. So let's say we were doing this, 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 and this. And then I was bringing in someone for my damage. It would probably be someone like a, a Candy or a Trunda to come in and do damage. Or you could go something pretty fancy like a Nuke Tormund. So Tormund bring in your uh, freeze capability. More annoying annoyance for the enemy team. Hard to kill. Put them in Swift Parry or something like that. And then for the setup, you just want to make sure that Warlord's using his A3 whenever he can. Hedgy. You turn off the A2. Tormen, uh, I think, is just kind of fine as he is. Maybe make sure that he does his Blizzard Rage, because sometimes he does all sorts of weird stuff. And then you kind of watch this roll. So we're going to start it on auto as if I am the defense. I might, I'm probably still just too fast anyway, but you see here, we did a double hit. So I got a stun off. I pushed turn meter back and... The person who I stunned was actually their person who's going to speed their team up. And therefore, really, I mean, because Warlord got a go, it's now extremely annoying for them to do anything. I know I'm fighting low-level stuff here, guys, but it's the same no matter who I fight. Um, he just got something resisted there. That seems insane. 
the it must just be the three percent chance to resist but yeah these teams are not hard for me to beat generally but this is the style of team you would use him in with this type of build so double hit a one pushing turn me to back plus a freeze there from um, them trying to use abilities we're just kind of like either decreasing speed and turn meter with a chance to stun as well and honestly i would hate to fight this team and that's what you want you want to play play your defense in a way that people would hate to fight you even actually going against a Morley here which would be the best anti-hedgy team it's so difficult for them to get any sort of traction going when Hedgie's just kind of doing all this annoying stuff. So this is the way he's played nowadays. Um, it's not as much fun. It's not as sexy. It's not the sexy numbers. But it, he, it means that he remains one of the best arena champions in the game. So there you go, guys. Hedgie in action. The same build there, by the way. Um, I don't think it's the right faction today. But the same build. He will absolutely go in my faction war team. For night revs he'll be locking out enemies i will keep his a2 active he'll lock out enemies he'll stun enemies um he'll do a bit of damage at the same time but he will become part of my factional team and uh absolutely an arena team champ so there you go guys i've been hell hades hope you enjoyed the video i will see you later